Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I'm here today to talk to you about the latest limited edition release from the Spirit of Yorkshire Distillery. Uh, this is Filey Bay Porter Cask. Um, so this ties in quite nicely with the IPA finish, uh, which you'll have uh, heard me talk about before. Um, and this is another example of the very close links, the unique links, because I'm not sure that there is another distillery stroke brewery that has the links that these guys do between the Spirit of Yorkshire Distillery and the Wall Top Brewery. Um, and whereas the IPA was uh, a IPA beer that was put into casks, etc. As the name suggests, this is porter casks. Um, so this is a porter that's been used. Now this is a porter finish. It's not a full maturation um, in barrels that had, had porter in beforehand. Um, it's essentially the same principle as the IPA finish. The reason it's not called porter finish is this is not part of their core range. Um, you might be able to see on there that this is a limited edition special release. There are only 2000 bottles of this and it's bottled at 50%. Whereas the IPA finish is an ongoing part of the core range of their finishes from the flagship, uh, which is bottled at 46. Um, so uh, before I tell you what this tastes like, because uh, I was very much looking forward to this, I do like porters and stouts and things like that and uh, the influence on whiskies. Let me just give you some background information about the distillery, about the Waltop Brewery, uh, and also the process that has got this into the bottle. The Spirit of Yorkshire Distillery was founded in 2016 by Tom Meller and David Thompson. Tom was an arable farmer who set up the Wall Top Brewery in 2013 and already had ideas about opening a whiskey distillery in conjunction, and so partnered with long-standing friend and marketing expert David to set up the new spirit venture. The barley used for both beer and whiskey production is grown on Tom's own fields, with milling, mashing and fermentation taking place at the brewery four and a half miles away from the distillery itself. If the distillery was in Scotland, this would not be allowed due to Scotch Whiskey Association regulations. In planning the distillery, Tom and David enlisted the help of legendary distillery consultant Jim Swan, who was well known around the world for assisting new distilleries such as Cavalan, Kilhoman, Penderen and Lindor's Abbey before his untimely death in 2017. The house style will ultimately be akin to the likes of Glenlivet, fruit forward but somewhat delicate in body. The master distiller is a young man named Joe Clark. Joe's first job in the whiskey industry was as a part-timer in the York branch of the whiskey shop, at that time managed by none other than yours truly. His passion and enthusiasm was obvious from the very start, and he has worked tirelessly to ensure the early spirit releases from the distillery, under the brand name of Filey Bay, are of the highest quality. However, as is a legal requirement whenever I discuss Joe, I am obliged to show you this picture of Joe with our good friend Ollie Chilton of the Whiskey Exchange during a trip to Isla. Feel free to ask him about the long hair, it's quite the story. In addition to two copper pot stills, a directional arm can connect to a four plate column still, which enables them to play around with reflux and redistillation. Maturation takes place principally in first fill ex bourbon casts from Old Forester, although plenty of experimentation has been done with other cast types and finishing. Indeed, the current core range features a finish using Moscatel wine casks and an STR X Rioja cast finish. STR, or shaved, toasted, and recharred, is a signature of Jim Swan's legacy. Filey Bay flagship, however, can be seen as the key introduction to the Filey Bay flavour profile, with light, fruity and creamy notes throughout. Unlike other recent new whisky distilleries across the UK, Spirit of Yorkshire never had any intention to delve into the massive gin or growing rum market, which would have given them an early and potentially lucrative revenue stream. The only concession they've made was the release of a whisky and malt spirit cream liqueur at the end of 2020, allowing visitors to their distillery who didn't drink whisky the chance to still appreciate their output. Just like the IPA finish release, Filey Bay Porter Cask has a somewhat convoluted process to get to bottle, but it's one that exemplifies the close connection between the distillery and its sister brewery. Barrels of Filey Bay whiskies from both ex Bourbon and ex Pedro Jimenez Sherry, that will be bottled as Sherry Cask Reserve No. 2, were filled with Wold Top Marmalade Porter, which then rested for 14 months to add an additional influence to the wood. Entering the cask at 5%, the porter was disgorged from those barrels at a higher ABV of 8.5% to be bottled under the name Rip Curl. The casks were then refilled with full-term ex-bourbon matured whisky that had originally been distilled in 2018 and returned to the warehouse for about 9 months, eventually being released as a limited edition of only 2,000 bottles at an ABV of 50%. Okay, so uh, of the 2,000 bottles, I've been reliably informed that the UK 
has an allocation of about five, 600 of those 2000, um, because Spirit of Yorkshire are growing internationally, fantastic reputation. Um, so you will find these in other countries. So if you're watching from outside of the UK, there is a good chance that you will be able to find, admittedly not many of these, um, but there is a good chance that you'll be able to find this in the likes of, uh, say, Germany, France, I think. I'm not sure whether this will make it over to the States, but there's, it might do. You never know. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the capability to do international shipping at the moment, simply because of all the red tape, all the Brexit nonsense several years ago. Um, so, yes, if you can find it from somewhere that's going to ship to the UK, uh, ship from the UK even, uh, but unfortunately, it won't be me just yet. But I'm working on it. Trust me on this. So... Um, limited edition, uh, I've also been informed that this is probably a one-off. There's very, it's unlikely that there's going to be another one of these. So, you know, grab it while you can um, and uh, enjoy it while it lasts. So, on the nose, we have that lovely citrusy note that's so indicative of Filey Bay flagship and the finishes. That ex-bourbon cask is giving you that light kind of citrus cream, a little bit of a kind of like biscuity note on there, which is then exacerbated with the IPA finish. But here we have that citrus note that just goes a little bit darker and it, it moves a little bit into kind of more red berry notes. And there's a very soft spiciness underlying. Now that porter element, now porter and stout, are kind of interchangeable you know if you google what's the difference between a porter and a stout there is a rough rule of thumb that porter will use malted barley whereas stouts will use roasted unmalted barley but even then they're kind of interchangeable because that's not necessarily a hard and fast rule there are some stouts that use malted barley there are some porters that use unmalted barley the marmalade porter that is used for this doesn't use marmalade it's because it has kind of an orangey note there's like a chocolate like orange coffee chocolate like an orange marmalade that kind of like slightly bitter orange uh, note that you'll get through a really good orange marmalade so it's it's got that flavor profile in that porter it doesn't really come through on the nose it's not particularly obvious for such a dark rich beer it's there's a bit of an originess on there, but that sort of that could easily be confused from that natural citrusy note that you get with the, the core whiskey. But you do get a slight underlying darker fruit note coming through. Not necessarily chocolate, maybe like there's a mere hint of kind of coming back and letting this settle a little bit in the glass. There is a little bit of a sort of terry chocolate orange feel to it, but it's not it's not obvious. It's not kind of like, oh, this is definitely a porter finish. Right, let's see what we like on the palate. And what we do get is a lovely, rich, warm note coming through. And that chocolate orange feel that's kind of barely perceptible on the nose is very much there on the palate. And again, I'm going to, probably going to compare this to the IPA in terms of we're dealing with a different type of beer but the process is still the same. And whereas the IPA kind of adds a little bit of a creaminess and you get this kind of light hoppy biscuity note, this is definitely richer and darker, but it's not overpowering. It's not, it's not obvious it's a porter, which for some people might kind of be a bit disappointing because it's not enough, but for other people it might actually be much better because it's not too dominating. I've had a stout cast. Uh, I don't have any more of it up there, but Katokin Creek did a stout cast. Now, admittedly, that was a rye whiskey, um, and that was full maturation in barrels that had had uh, stout in previously. So there was a lot more of a stout influence on that. And for some people, it was a little bit overbearing. It was kind of, and that was a, a spicy rye whiskey as well. And even that was kind of pushed down by the, the beeriness that was coming through. This is much more Filey Bay forward with less of the porter influence coming through, but actually balances it very, very nicely. It gives it a bit more depth. It gives it a bit more weight. There's a surprising kind of spicy prickle all the way through. I wouldn't necessarily call it pepperiness, but it's almost as if you took, if you took a, like again, a Terry's chocolate orange, 
kind of milk and dark. You kind of interchange the segments of a Terry's chocolate orange between milk and dark. And then you kind of just had a little sprinkling of sort of chili flakes, but only one or two that just kind of like tingle around and just kind of lift everything. There's a lovely warm finish. That spiciness that's on there actually lengthens the finish as well. It still really maintains its Filey Bay profile. It's got that citrusy note and that is then helped with that orangey note of the porter. It's not as rich as I was expecting it to be, but actually I think that's for its benefit because I think if you, di if you did say a full maturation, if you did sort of like five years in cast that had had porter in before, the danger is, is the porter element dominates the house style. And what's really good about all of the finishes is that you maintain that Filey Bay house style all the way through. You've also got to bear in mind, we've got a slightly higher alcohol percentage as well. So if you did want to add water to this, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I think 50% is about bang on because I think you'd probably lose the, the darker notes, the richer notes that are coming through on this if you did knock it down to 46 or even a little bit lower than that. It's a really, really interesting expression. It's another belter. It's fascinating what they can do with the cask, uh, interchanging the casks with the brewery and being able to do, you know, we could theoretically have like a little range of, there's an IPA, there's a, a there's a porter, I can't remember what else sort of Walter will do, but you know, you could keep going with all these different finishes and casks and everything like that. But it's fascinating to see what they can do in terms of this interplay between whiskey and beer and everything like that. Speaking of which, if you are in the local area, uh, there's a beer uh, shop just down the road from me called Hop Cavern. Uh, and Lee, who's the owner, I got on really well with. We are actually having an event for this um, on the 18th of May, simply because we've got so much stuff on in between. But on the 18th of May, which is a Saturday evening at six o'clock, we're going to do a private event where we're going to basically look at the two beer-influenced whiskies influenced beers um, of Spirit of Yorkshire. So we'll start with the flagship, as the baseline. We will then have the Scarborough Fair IPA, the IPA finish, and then the barrel wave. So you can look at how what the core whiskey is, what the core beer is, how the beer influences whiskey, and then how the whiskey influences beer. And we'll do exactly the same with the porter cask as well. So we might have a little bit of flagship again as a baseline. Uh, and then we've got the marmalade porter, we've got the porter cask, and then we've got the um, rip curl, they've called it, which is the um, barrel finished porter that was used to make the porter cask. Uh, and we will also be offering some food. Uh, we are doing gourmet crisp butties, uh, which are the perfect accompaniment to beer and whiskey, I think you'll find. Um, but the porter cask is available. Um, so I'm filming this the day before it launches, which is um, 29th, 20, yeah, 29th of March, Good Friday, uh, is when it launches. It is available. Um, it is 70, oh, now you've got me thinking. It is $79.99, although it might be $74.99. I can't remember off the top of my head. Probably should have checked that before I did the video. But because it's part of their limited edition range, so this is not part of the core finish range, we've got, well, 600, call it, bottles available for the UK, uh, and we've got 50% ABV as well. This is a limited run, which, as from what I've been told, is probably a one-off, and we might not see again ever. Or if we do, it's going to be a while off in the future. So... Grab it while you can, because it's brilliant and it's fascinating. If you can, get the IPA with it as well. Um, or join us at the tasting or yourself, go to Wold Top and get some of the Porter and some of the Rip Girl and do a before and an after, um, because it's really, really interesting kind of going through the development and seeing how one influences the other, influences the other. Great stuff. They just keep knocking it out of the park all the time. There isn't a duff one among them. There really isn't. There's just one that's, you know, uh, it's not as preferred as the others. You know, for me personally, it's the Moscatel. But I know people that absolutely adore the Moscatel. And I have the Moscatel every now and again. I go, actually, this is really good. They're just consistently brilliant. And I'm so pleased for Joe and his team. It's absolutely fantastic. So www.spiritspecialist.com if you are wanting to buy a bottle because I can send anywhere in the UK, just not anywhere outside of the UK. Um, I don't have many. I don't think I can get any more because, uh, from what I gather, everything in the UK has been allocated to the various retailers, of which there are not many. But if you buy it from me, as opposed to one of the big boys, 
you're supporting a family, small independent shop, rather than a big boy that's just gonna list it and not really give a toss about it. Um, so that's me done. I shall see you at the next video. Cheers.